Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're all doing very well on this Sunday morning. Well, last week we learned about God's law. He gave the Ten Commandments to his people. And we learned that the Ten Commandments can be summed up by saying that we must love God with all our hearts and our souls and our minds. And that we must love our neighbor. That means anybody, actually whether they're friendly to us or whether they're not friendly to us, we need to love them like we love ourselves. So that's what we learned last week. Now, there was another law that God gave to the Israelites while they were traveling through the wilderness, which is a very, very important one. And this one comes from that we are always sinning every single day. And somehow, we need to be in relationship with God. And for us to be able in re to be in relationship with God, our sins needs to be forgiven. Do you still remember what sin means? Shove of God, I'm in charge, no to your rule. So we're going to learn today about the Day of Atonement. Now, it sounds very complicated, but I'll try to explain it to you in the best way that I can. So we're going to be reading out of the Bible God's word, God speaking to us. So God is going to speak to us right now. And we're going to turn to the book of Leviticus. And we're going to read Leviticus chapter 16, verses 29 to 31. And after that, we'll read some more, but I will let you know when we get to that. So Leviticus 16, verses 29 to 31. And as always, we read out of the New International Reader's Version, which can be found on the YouVersion app. Okay, so let's hear what this Day of Atonement was all about. So this is God speaking. Let's listen carefully. Here is a law for you that will last for all time to come. On the 10th day of the 7th month, you must not eat anything. You must not do any work. It does not matter whether you are Israelites or outsiders. On that day, your sin will be paid for. You will be made pure and clean. You will be clean from all your sins in my sight. That day is a Sabbath for you. You must rest on it. You must not eat anything on that day. This is a law that will last for all time to come. So that was Leviticus 16 verses 29 to 31. Now we're going to read from verses 32 to 34 of the same ch chapter. So Leviticus 16 verses 32 to 34. The high priest must pay for sin. He must make everything pure and clean. He has been anointed and prepared to become the next high priest after his father. He must put on the sacred clothes that are made out of linen. He must make the most holy room, the tent of meeting, and the altar pure. And he must pay for the sin of the priests and all the members of the community. Here is a law for you that will last for all time to come. Once a year, you must pay for all the sin of the Israelites. So it was done just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now this sounds quite complicated, but what we get from it is there is this man whom God appoints. They say he's anointed. God appoints a man who is the high priest. And then once every single year, he needs to go into the tabernacle. Now tabernacle was sort of a tent that they had while traveling in the wilderness. And it was a symbol of God going with them. I mean, God is everywhere, of course, but it was a symbol of God going with them. Um, 
And um, once a year, this high priest needed to go into a very holy place where only he could go. And he needed to offer the sacrifice of an animal, the blood of an animal, every single year. And in that sacrifice, he paid for his own sin and he paid for the sins of the Israelites. And that's how God could stay in relationship um, with the Israelites. Relationship, I mean, he could, could love them. He could know them and they could love God and they could know God. But in a way, you can see there is a bit of a problem here. Like they have to do it every single year. Just to do it once a year is not enough. So I had to do it all the time, every single year, because every single day they still sin. They still disobeyed. We still disobey people like you, perhaps not every day, but definitely during the week, once at least, you disobey mommy and daddy, which is sinful because we need to respect them. So imagine in those days of the Israelites, the high priest had to go into the holiest place every single year, once a year, to pay for his sins and for the sins of all the Israelites. And it had to happen every single year, and it was never enough. Now... This idea of the Israelites in the wilderness and the high priest offering sacrifices, um, this story is actually very important for us for how we understand who Jesus is, what he does on the cross in the New Testament. So let's look quickly at a book called Hebrews. And we'll look at chapter 10. Verses 11, 12, and 14. And it'll explain to us how Jesus actually becomes the high priest for us. Now remember, Jesus didn't sin at all. So when he made his sacrifice, he didn't have to pay for his sins because he didn't sin at all. He was perfect. He was God. But he paid for the sins of everybody even though he was completely innocent. So let's see what Hebrews 10 verses 11 to 12 and 14 tells us. Day after day, every priest stands and does his special duties. This is now talking about the high priest. He offers the same sacrifices again and again, but they can never take away sin. Jesus, our priest, offered one sacrifice for sins for all time. Then he sat down at the right hand of God. By that one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. How amazing is that? So when Jesus came to the earth and when he died on the cross, we know he died for our sins. But he became like the ultimate high priest that only once, because he is God, fully human, fully God, once and for all, he made one sacrifice. He died on the sin. He was completely innocent, never sinned, yet he paid for all our sins. And this thing where they say that then he sat down at the right hand of God Sitting down is actually means that it is finished, meaning there doesn't need to be another sacrifice. He doesn't need to do it every single year, like the high priest did it way back in the Israelites' time. Once was enough, never again. Jesus' blood is enough to clean us and take away all of our sins. How big? The sins are, how small the sins are, doesn't matter to God. So let's look at two questions, boys and girls. First question, why did the high priest have to make atonement, that has to be paying for sins, for him and the Israelites? How did he have to do it every year? Then second question, who becomes our high priest 
once and for all. And then how did he do this? Okay, boys and girls, let's pray and thank Jesus for becoming our high priest. And that will be our lesson for today. Let's close our eyes in prayer, boys and girls. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you made one sacrifice once and for all, that you became the high priest for us and paid for all our sins. We thank you so much and we ask you that you, we will live in thankfulness to you and what you have done for us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for today, boys and girls. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.